Hey fellow gliders, it's me, and today I'm going to share with you a technique I created called the Miracle Method. And the Miracle Method aims to transpose data from one tab, basically to another tab, in order to visualize your data a little bit easier. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So here I have some data for some people. And here we have just some Boolean values as true, false, based upon whether or not they have healthy lifestyles in these variety of ways. And maybe we want to display these check marks as an inline list, right? Now we could certainly do a list of check marks, not very pretty, but we could do like a basic table here and put in something like this, right? Where whether they're a non-smoker or if they exercise, if they're a vegan, something like this. And right, but maybe we want to do something more with that. Maybe we want to show an icon. Maybe we want to customize what this name is, right? Basic table components are not interactive. I can't click on anything and dive deeper into that data. If you want an interactive list, you have to use an inline list in Glide. The problem is you for an inline list is that your data can't be structured into columns. An inline list looks at rows. So I need to have rows of data, which means I need to have a row for health, a row for exercise, a row for being vegan, a row for meditation and so forth. So here I have a new sheet here called badges where we have those exact same uh, columns of data and an icon to represent them. Now the challenge is that this sheet is not user specific. Nowhere in here do we have uh, user information as to who applies to which, right? So we need to create that sort of user specific field here uh, as efficiently as possible because we don't want to cause more work for ourselves. It also needs to be dynamic, right? We don't want to show all of these tags for everybody because they don't always have those same tags, right? These two people are not vegan, so they shouldn't have the vegan badge, for example. All right, so that's our dilemma is how do we convert our array here of true false values to be a user specific inline list. Now the first step of the miracle method is to create an if then else for every column that you want to uh, transpose to the other sheet. Now the reason why we need an if then else column here is because we need to determine if this value is true or if it's not true. Right now, it does appear that these are Boolean values and I have true and a false, but really this might be a true and an empty, but we need there to be another value besides true if it's not true. So we, we're gonna force it with an if then else. So we're gonna say if health no smoking is true, then true, else false. Um, we could also do like one and zero that's fine too actually. And then we're gonna call this column health and then I can say if no smoking, like this. All right, so here's our first column. I'm gonna go ahead and create the if then else's for the rest of these as well. Okay, I'm done with my ones and zeros here for all of my items. Now the next step is to concatenate these using a template column and we have to do it in the same order that we want these to appear in our inline list. So I'm just going to go in order. I've already done this. So I'm going to create a template column. And I have here uh, nine values, I think. One, two, three, four, five, six, eight values. Okay. So I'm going to do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right? Just like that. And I'm going to add some replacements. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And our replacements are going to be our ifs. So this is our health, if no smoking, health, if exercise, and so forth, right? Health, if vegan. And again, we have to make sure that we do this in the same order as our inline list. So this is where it might be handy to take a screenshot of your inline list and re refer to it so that you're not flipping back and forth. But I already created mine in order so I know exactly what I want. All right, so this is kind of what we want here, this array. Um, and we'll call this uh, badge CSV. 
Okay, this is also the reason why we need to do ones and zeros because if these values are empty, then there's not gonna be a value for that array and we need there to be a value there. All right, so we have our array. And so the next step is to make this array user specific more or less because whenever we visit a user's profile we want to display this inline list but only to the person that we're viewing which means we need to know the person that we're viewing so i'm going to store that value of the person we're viewing in the user sheet so to do that we need to create a relation back to ourself and store that value of who we're viewing in a column somewhere um, so I do this a lot in a lot of my apps where I'll create a current user column, which is a template column, and I grab the email address of the current user. So the user profile, email, done. All right, so if I'm viewing as person one or person two or person three, that's the email address that'll show up here. And then I relate that back to the user sheet. So I'm gonna say rel, current user, and I relate this back to the current user. So where the current user matches the values in the user's email, all right? So now we're relating all three of our users to my person one column. Or if I'm person two, I'm relating all three of these users to my person two row. All right, and then I need a place to store the person I'm viewing. So I'll say, um, viewed or user uh, selected user how about that selected user when i go to click on somebody um i'm going to write really what i need is just this comma separated list so that should be sufficient um i'll say selected users badge csv Okay, so right now I'm person one, and whenever I click on a user, I want their CSV list of ones and zeros to appear in my row, right? So when I click on person two, it'll look like this. If I click on person three, it'll look like this. If I click on my own profile, it'll look like this. So in order to get that value in here, I need to use a set column when I go to view the person. And we can do that set column via this current user relation. All right, so here is the list of people. I'm gonna edit this list and change the action from show detail to instead do a set column and then show detail. Show detail. And then in the set column values, I'm gonna change not this item, but the relation to the current user. And I'm gonna set the selected user badge CSV to be the badge CSV of the person that I'm viewing. All right, so I'll call this set CSV and view, save. All right, so you'll see that when I click on person two, I see their screen, but behind the scenes, I've selected their CSV and put it in my row. Okay, all right, so now I have a user-specific CSV value. And so in my badges sheet, I'm gonna go ahead and add that value as a template column. So I'm gonna do a template. I'll call this selected user. Same thing, right? Selected user badge CSV. And I'm going to grab from the template the user profile, which is the person that's currently using the app, then their user badge CSV. And you see it populates it down the row. So now we've applied uh, that array to this inline list. All right, ready for this? Here's where the magic happens. So first what we need to do is create a column in this inline list called row number or array number, or something like this, where we start with zero and then place them in order, just sequentially, just like that. And we have to make sure that the number order we use here is the same order that we've added those values in this array, which I know I've already done, right? So non-smoker, which is the first item in the array is zero, should fall, that's the one that, that's here, right? Exercises regularly is this second one. Is a vegan would be this first zero and so forth, right? 
All right, then what we do is we split this template column. So I'm going to say split uh, selected user badge <laughs> CSV. Um, so I'm going to split it like so, and split by the comma. Okay, and this is why we have to use another value besides true, right? Because if it's true and then empty, then see these zeros here, they won't show up at all. And so our array of eight items would only be an array of six items in this case, but we need it to be eight items. So that's why we have to have a one and a zero or some other value and some other non-value. Um, I'll show you another example momentarily here where we're not using ones and zeros, but like actual text and some icon. All right, so now what we can do is we can specify which value, is it a one or a zero for these list, inline list by using a single value column. All right, so we're gonna say uh, one or zero. We're gonna use a single value we're going to get from the start, and we're going to select our split selected user badge CSV. But we don't want to start with row zero always. We want to start it dynamically based on the array number for this inline list. So for row, we're going to hit the triple dots and watch what happens when we choose array number. nothing and you know why it's nothing uh, because my array number is a text column so this needs to be a number column very important number all right let's try that again sorry for the anticlimactic okay uh, so we're gonna say this um, one or zero all right so single value again we're gonna get the from start row array number from split selected user badge CSV, done. Look at that. So now we've basically transposed this array into its single value. So this one one zero one 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 zero is one one zero one 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 zero. All right. And so now we have an inline list that's user specific, and we can filter it based on whether or not the value is a one or a zero. So instead of showing this basic table, now we can make it a lot more interactive, right? I can show an inline list. This inline list can just be the badges list, right? And we can display a list of icons. We can make it a tiles view if we want, right? Make it square or circle, kind of show like badges, right? These are all the badges this person has earned. Let's say. And it's interactive, so they can click into it. And the last thing we need to do is filter it, right? Because not, this person hasn't earned all of these badges. So we simply take the list, options, filter, and we'll filter it where one or zero is one. All right, so person two has these badges. Person one has these badges, and person three has these badges, right? And we can display this list, again, as an inline list. We could do horizontally scrolling, so they can scroll side to side, let's say, if they wanted to. And so here's another example of how you can use the miracle method. In this case, I have prompts and responses to those prompts. This could have been filled out via some sort of uh, in-app survey or questionnaire or user profile onboarding, let's say. And now I have these five prompts with my five favorite responses. And I want to display them in an inline list so that way I can click on them and dive deeper or scroll through them, something like this. So again, I did the same thing, right? Created an if then else for each of these responses. And again, the only reason why we needed to do this is because we need to generate some sort of non-empty character if there is not a response. So I have, if there is something in there, then just display it, otherwise display some sort of character. Now, because I'm using commas in these texts, I can't 
join these together with commas because then when I go to split, it'll split things in the wrong areas. So my template column actually uses uh, a character that probably isn't gonna be used very often, like a backslash, or you could do a tilde. And then I have that same logic where when the user goes to click on a user, it's gonna write this value from that user into my user's row under the selected user prompts. I then bring that value into the prompt sheet here in the template column. Again, now I have the prompt, but more fleshed out, right? I have an array number. I can, again, include an icon, right, if I wanted to. And then I have the split prompt column where I'm splitting this by that backslash, and then the single value to split it out by the actual response using the array. And again, this is the from start with the array number, and I'm splitting the split prompts up at the top here. And again, now I have um, an inline list that I can filter where the response is not whatever character I selected in my user sheet. Uh, here. So now I can dive into these prompts, right? Maybe I can display it in a card view. It's kind of side to side like this. Let's do a full, maybe a full view. So the details are gonna be the prompt responses. I give myself plenty of space, lines of text, and the title could be the prompt itself. And so now I have this scrolling card of all of my responses. So again, uh, some fun ways that you can now transpose data using some if then else's, a template, an inline list with some custom actions and some split column off of an array using some conditional logic on the inline list. So this is the miracle method. The reason why I call it the miracle method is I think back to the story where Jesus fed the 5,000 with fish, right? He collected fish, put them in baskets. Uh, so he collected them all. Then he was able to divide the bread, divide the fish amongst all of the users. So it became this miracle of taking, gathering, splitting, and distributing. So here in the user sheet, we have this uh, gathering of data, bringing them off to someplace else, splitting them up, and then distributing in an inline list. So the miracle method. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave me a comment below. And as always, thanks for watching.